Scientists say they've slowed and even reversed some of the devastating effects of motor neuron disease. The treatment works in only 2% of patients, but the team at the University of Sheffield has described it as truly remarkable and a moment of hope for the whole disease. The MND Association said there was a mounting confidence in the therapy. Well, the research was carried out in part by the Neuroscience Institute at Sheffield University in England. Its director is Professor Dame Pamela Shaw. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. My pleasure. So, a, a rare glimpse here of good news. Could you just talk us through exactly how this works in, in the simplest possible terms? So, um, as, as you mentioned, 2% of patients with MND have a, a, a slight fault in this SOD1, SOD1 gene. And what um, the Tofferson therapy does, it has to be injected via a lumbar puncture into the cerebrospinal fluid, and it lowers the level of the SOD1 protein and the toxic effects to motor neurons that arise from that protein. The treatment has to be given at monthly intervals. I see. And, and this kind of technical uh, approach that, that helps just that small proportion, uh, what kind of confidence can we get from it? Can it be broadened out? Do we know it definitely works all of the time? What's the kind of confidence levels around it? So we know that there are at least 30 genes that can cause or predispose to motor neuron disease. SOD1 was the first gene that was found back in 1993. So I think it's really important proof of principle for, for the first rogue gene that can cause MND. Um, so that um, approach can be applied to other genetic subgroups, but also very important in, in this trial is that we've now got um, proteins called biomarkers that we can measure to show that a treatment is working. So we could measure the, the reduced level of the SOD1 protein in the spinal fluid. We could measure reduction of neurofilament proteins that are released as motor neurons get injured and degenerate. And Hofferson treatment lowered the level of those proteins. So that's a marker that we've got that will enable us to tell if an experimental treatment is working at an early stage. Which so obviously is potentially, for... yeah, potentially very useful that early, that early stage. Uh, I think yeah. we should just pause and just remind people what exactly is MND and what are some of the, the devastating impacts of it? So we have two sets of motor neurons, upper motor neurons in the front part of the brain, lower motor neurons all the way down the spinal cord in your back. And what they do, those precious cells in a nutshell, is form a connection between the brain and the muscles. So it is that they are the vehicle, if you like, by which the brain controls movement. And as those cells get damaged and degenerate, then the connection between the brain and the muscles is lost and the muscles become weak and wasted. And there, there is this cruel creeping paralysis that happens to patients and it can affect the muscles of the arms and legs, the speech and swallowing muscles, the muscles that control breathing. Um, but certain muscle groups, the ones that move the eyes, for example, are relatively spared in the disease. It's interesting you use the word cruel there. That is exactly how it seems and feels to so many. It is such a, a devastating impact on people's lives. And the, is, it a, is it fair to say this is a particularly complicated area of science? Why, why have we taken so long uh, to get where we are now? Or is this actually an example of we have enough funding and, and the research is going well? Just give us a scale, put it into some kind of context for us. So I think the nervous system is, is undoubtedly more difficult than some other systems in the body to get effective treatments. Um, it, you know, to get effective treatments into the nervous system is more difficult. We can't, we haven't been able until recently to study the nervous system from MND patients in life. If you're a skin doctor, you can take a biopsy of the diseased skin and study it in the laboratory. We obviously can't do that to live in, living human beings, 
But nowadays, we can take a small sliver of skin cells and reprogram those cells in the laboratory to become motor neurons or the neighborhood cells that sit around the motor neurons in the nervous system and protect them. So we can model the disease much better, but that has only happened in the last few years. I see. Um, so we use those models to try and understand the mechanisms of disease, but also identify new treatment targets. I and see. this, this Tofferson has emerged from just that process. I got it. I'm, I'm afraid uh, it's a hugely complicated area and I wish we could have more time to go into it because it is so uh, tricky. But thank you so much for explaining it so clearly. Professor Dame Pamela Shaw, thank you.